I recently learned a new and easier way to reload your disposable film camera. So today, we'll wrap things up with this topic and give you a quick summary of everything you need to know regarding disposable cameras. If you wanted to know more about disposable cameras, including how to reload and reuse one, then this video is for you. Hi, my name is Jorge, welcome. On this channel, we merge creativity and productivity to try to live a more fulfilling life. I previously made videos where I reviewed disposable cameras, talked about the potential reasons why you would use them, and even show you how to reload them as well. I highly suggest you check those videos out before we continue. That being said, I've been getting tons and tons of questions about disposable cameras, including many requests to reload the Fujifilm QuickSnap 400, which, I'm sorry to say, is not a feasible option. So I decided to make a video answering some of your questions, but also condensing all the useful information from previous videos as well. Basically the ultimate guide regarding disposable cameras, all the useful information, including a faster way to reload this camera, the Kodak Fun Saver disposable camera. This is the last video I'm making about disposable cameras, so hopefully all the information is condensed and very clear as well. As always, there's gonna be stamps down below, but if you just want to jump to the reloading part, you can do so right here. Now, if you're ready, let's get started. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but disposable cameras are just an affordable way to get into shooting film. These are cheap, plastic cameras that come preloaded with a film roll of 27 exposures. The film stock depends on the brand that you purchase, but more on that later. These are called disposable for a reason, they're supposed to be single-use cameras only, and every time you take it to a photo lab or a developing center, they will do that unless you request otherwise, and try to keep it as a memento or a souvenir. When the photo lab opens these, they normally break. The lab removes the film roll, gets it developed, and discards the rest. So no, not every disposable camera is reusable and reloadable. In fact, most are not. And because most of these are designed to be discarded and recycled after use, when you find one that is easy to open up and easy to reload and reuse, then you should keep it. That's the main reason why I'm making videos like this, to let people know. There are a lot of options out there, and for the most part, these are kind of the same. Same plastic build, same mediocre quality. The only thing that differs for most entry-level users is the actual film inside them, the qualities of the film and the aesthetic look as well. But for the purpose of reloading them and reusing them, the brand and the preloaded film does not matter. Eventually, you'll be able to put any film that you want, 35mm film, and reuse the camera. So finding a camera that is easy to reload is what matters. Take the Fujifilm Quick Snap for example, a great fun camera to use, but you cannot take it apart and try to reload it, it completely falls apart. So for all of you asking me about showing you how to reload this camera, it's not really possible, sorry. Also think about the time wasted in that process, if you're gonna try to reload a camera and it's going to take hours and you need special tools and the hand pulls of a surgeon, then perhaps it's too much of a hassle and it's not worth it. Now, there are disposable cameras that say they are reloadable and reusable, but at least here in Canada, these are around $45 after tax. This is way too high. Most of the cameras I talked about on this channel cost from $10 to $15 at most, and it's the same build quality and image quality as well. This brings us to which one should you get. I highly recommend the Kodak Fun Saver disposable camera. They cost around $10 to $15. This camera is really easy to operate, easy to open up, easy to replace the battery, and easy to reload. And if you're planning to reload them very often, then that is what matters the most. The purpose of these cameras is just to have fun, an easy and fun way to shoot film. Maybe a short trip with friends, or a summer getaway, or something along those lines. These are not made for professional photographers, these are not made for people that have tons of pro film and camera gear. These are made for people that just want to spend $10 and have fun. People that perhaps have never shot in film before, or you are curious about starting your photography journey, or you are curious about spending money on an actual film camera, but you want to test it first. You want to see how it would look and see how it would feel first. And that is valid. I get that some of you will think or say, just spend $100 and get a film camera, a couple lenses, and an assorted selection of film stocks. But the average person that wants to try one of these 
just wants a quick and easy way to take photographs. Maybe it's a summer event or a short trip. They don't want to have to worry about the camera itself. And asking them to learn the exposure triangle and to buy a film camera and to know what uh, your settings mean and all those things to a person that has never shot film before is a lot to ask. The point of videos like these and channels like this one is to help people out, to get them going on their creative journey, not to put walls and prevent them from trying things out. And if a disposable camera can help people do that, get their feet wet with shooting on film and photography in general, then so be it. This step is very similar to my previous video, but in fact is actually easier. The entire reloading process had to be done in a dark room, since exposing the film to light would ruin it. So in the previous video, I suggested getting a film changing bag or completing the process in a dark room with no light. But we don't need that anymore. We do need a prying tool, so you can use something like a flathead screwdriver or even a plastic card like a gift card. We need black electrical tape to seal the seams and avoid light leaks. We need a toothpick to hold the gears in place and a brand new roll of 35mm film. In this case, I used the Fujifilm Acros black and white stock. I've made a video showing a step-by-step -step guide on how to reload this camera and I highly recommend you watch it before we continue. This new way that I'm about to show you is actually faster and easier. However, I still think you should watch a previous video to get a better grasp and understanding on how these operate. And I already tested it. I already reloaded the camera, reused it, shot with it, and developed the film. So I know that this method works well. In fact, I use this method to reload the camera with the Acros 2 black and white film stock. And if you want to see the results and learn more about that experience, you can watch that video right here. All right, it's time to show you how I reloaded the camera and how you can do it as well. Take your prying tool of choice, in this case, a plastic card, and start opening the tabs on the sides. Once you've opened both of the sides, then move to the bottom of the camera. Do not force it too hard. These are just plastic tabs and don't require much force. The small tab located at the top is a little bit delicate, so to protect it, we're gonna open the camera from the bottom just like this. You can go ahead and remove this little plastic protecting tab, and now you can remove both the film spool and the film roll from the camera. And voila! This is it, that's all the moving parts that we're gonna be using today. Before we start the process of loading the film roll, we're gonna to have to reset the shot counter. Normally these sort of cameras come down from 27 all the way to zero, so you have to unlock this gear and reset it to the number of exposures you're using. Once you've done that, lock it back in place and it should be good to go. It should give you an accurate count of the shots now. The purpose of the toothpick is to release the gear that advances the film. We don't need it right now, but I wanted to show you what it does. When you insert it right here, it allows the gear to rotate in both directions, forward and backwards as well. More on that later. Now we're ready to start loading the film. Grab your brand new film roll and make sure the holes line up properly with the teeth of the film spool. Once you insert it properly and it's secure into place, you can start rolling up the film from the film roll into the film spool. Now you're ready to slide it into the camera. Make sure it lines up properly and you hold it in place. And now make sure the gears of the film roll line up with the gears inside the camera as well. If all goes well, you should see the strips line up with the actual gears in the camera and that's what makes a film move from side to side. Now you can place back the protective cover of the film roll and you're ready to just slide the back cover of the camera again. Now it's time to insert a toothpick. Remember, it will release the winding gear, allowing it to spin backwards, which in turn will allow us to use the screwdriver to complete the process. Turn the screwdriver counterclockwise, winding the film from the roll onto the film spool. You will hear clicking sounds and feel some minor resistance as well, and that is normal. When the process is completed, you won't be able to turn the screwdriver anymore, so don't force it. Now, remove the toothpick, wind up the film, and you should be good to go. The last thing we're gonna do is just grab some black electrical tape and seal the camera on the edges to prevent any light leaks and make sure that it seals properly. 
All right, so that's my take on disposable cameras, the reasons why I recommend it, why you should use one, which one should you pick, and how to reload it as well. As always, I'm curious to know what do you think? Do you normally shoot with disposable cameras? Do you shoot film? Do you shoot only digital? Do you think this is a waste of time? Share your thoughts in a comment down below. But that is it for today's video. If you found this video helpful or valuable, please like and subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and join my free newsletter as well. Thank you very much for watching, for giving me your time and your energy, and good luck with your creative process.